let me introduce you to a handy little tool that will block calls based on the number dial. We could do number ranges, specific numbers as well. And this is set tenant wide, so higher up. So this is different from just blocking calls on a user level within your team's client, because that has to be a specific number. Whereas this way, using the PowerShell backend, we can actually set it so that it blocks whole ranges of uh, source spam callers based on the calling number, of course. Let's have a look at how it fits together. Once you've downloaded the EXE, just double click on that to fire up the uh, program or the UI that's got PowerShell on the back. It'll complain about not being uh, a known publisher. That's all good. You can just OK that and move on. Then you'll see this UI pop up now. Just going to pause right there in this UI. And in this UI, we have a bunch of items. Firstly, it is the Teams Call Blocker. I've got my little new logo, brand new in my humble opinion logo on the far right. And uh, we have a connect button. Currently, there's nothing populated in the view table, which is the list box on the right hand side. And you'll see down the bottom, there's an events box. Now, in the events box, we'll see the version. We'll also see my email address. If you have any issues, suggestions, requests, pop them in there. We'll also see that at this point in time, when you fired up the call blocker app, the very first thing it did is set the execution policy so that it can run and then some instructions, which is in this case, please proceed to hit the connect button. Now it is built for the ability to use uh, MFA. And so that will pop up that browser window. Double click connect, we'll get the MFA prompt or click my account and we're done. We can go back to the app now and you'll see when I go back to the app, it's going to preload all those uh, pre-configured block numbers. Looking at the numbers that have now been populated in the view or list box on the right, I would like to just point out that how I've built this is that if you wanted to edit any of these entries, you would double click on that entry on the line and it'll copy it across to the left hand pane, which then allows you to remove and re add. So instead of edit, right, it just seemed to be a simpler way to do things. So that's how I've done it. Now let's have a look at how that works in practice. We'll grab one of these rules right here. Uh, Double click on it, it copies across to the other side. As you can see, currently it's set to enabled. I want to disable it. So I'm going to remove it and you'll see it's stated in events. It's been removed and the view list box shows it's no longer there. I will now go and you'll see it's gone there. Add the rule again. This time it's disabled. I'll go add. It'll show me in the events box that it's been added. And on the right hand side, I can see it's been added, but it's been added as disabled as you can see in the UI. Right, so now I can test as well. This is another piece of uh, capability. So say, for example, the, the number with the ones, I'll test that and you'll see it's true. It's based on actually how it's dialed. And even if I added some digits on the back of that, it'll test that and that too is true. So you don't need to do a, a star or a dot star or something like that on the back of the number because this is basically reading from left to right. What does the number look like? If I try the ones without the plus, you'll see it's false because it doesn't it doesn't have a match over there. Let, let's add a new number. Perhaps we'll add a new number block. We'll add some sevens, for example. Uh, I'll be a bit more specific this time. We'll add a number and uh, let's just copy it over there for a description. You can come up with more creative, smarter ways to manage and label this, of course. And we'll add it not not with a plus, of course. We'll 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 break away from the standard, but it is essentially using regex. And even if I enable this rule right here and add it, that's a specific number potentially. I've added it. There it is. And you'll see it's popped up in my list view as a number enabled as true. Now we can go and test it. We'll grab that number over there. Maybe I'll just copy it and paste it across and hit test. And it's false. The reason why it's false is it's not instantaneous. You have to wait. And in my experience, I found that waiting about 15 minutes does the trick. Then we test again. Boom, now it's working. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this really, really helpful. You've been watching, in my humble opinion. Please remember to subscribe and thank you for your support.